Vicar is a world-renowned company producing some of the most sophisticated drones in the world, which are referred to as the Bayraktar. Some people even go so far as to say that Seljuk Bayraktar, the CTO of the company, is the Elon Musk of Turkey. While that might be true or not, there is a lot to learn about their drones and their defense company. Seljuk and his brother, Hiluk, who is the CEO, have made quite the name for themselves as they are seen as the company that completely changed the playing field for the war between Russia and Ukraine. They have gained a cult status, and there is even a Ukrainian pop song dedicated to them. Let's get right into it. The company. It all started with the father of the two Baraktar brothers, Ozdemir Baraktar. He was a graduated medical engineer and started the company in 1984. At first, he focused on automotive parts and producing anything from engines, pumps, and spare parts for several other car producers. In the year 2000, it began focusing on aviation engineering, as Ozdemir saw a lot of progress and development in that sector. It then started producing unmanned aerial vehicles and unmanned combat aerial vehicles, for which it's now known as one of the biggest in their field. As a side note, one of the brothers, Seljuk, is married to the daughter of President Erdogan. I'm sure that has nothing to do with their imminent success and funding. Next to their endeavors in unmanned drones, they've started their production for a flying car called the Caesari. The vehicle was designed to be used in urban aerial transportation for people and cargo. The realization of its use in a populated urban environment can take 10 to 15 years, while its use like a recreational vehicle in rural areas can be possible within three to four years as predicted. They are all over the news, mostly related to the Ukraine war, but more recently, they've gained attention from countries all over the world wanting to buy their technology. Recent news also stated that the Russian army had trouble detecting the Varaktar, but are now able of detecting and disarming them, as they have reported to have shot down 100 TB2 drones. One thing is for sure, it makes all the difference on the battlefield. The Varaktar Drones Let's have a better look at what their technology and the drones they produce are about. Baikar is most known for the Baraktar TB2. The TB2 is a medium altitude, long endurance combat drone capable of being remotely controlled or conducting autonomous flight operations. It has a 12 meter wingspan and a maximum liftoff mass of 650 kilograms. Top speed is around 120 knots or 220 kilometers per hour. It is powered by a gasoline engine and can fly continuously for up to 27 hours at an altitude of 27,000 feet or 8.2 kilometers. The fuselage is made out of carbon fiber composite as it greatly reduces the weight. The drone is fitted with a variety of sensors including electro optical and infrared sensors, synthetic aperture radar or SAR and high resolution cameras. This allows it to execute high precision observation, reconnaissance and targeting missions. It is believed to be one of the most sophisticated drones in their field, which strikes fear in the armies it's used against. The flexibility of the Bayraktar TB2 to carry a range of weaponry is one of its most important advantages. The drone is equipped with two MAML precision guided bombs that can hit targets with pinpoint accuracy. MAML translates to Smart Micro Munition. The GCS, the Ground Control Station, is a fully equipped control room which has all the requirements of the NATO spec shelter. The mobile unit supports three operators and the systems are built in such a way that the three spots that are taken must be manned by a pilot, a payload operator, and a mission commander. It is equipped with state-of-the-art air conditioning and chemical, nuclear and biological filtration and filtering units. Each operator has dual screens and the ability to control and monitor the drone in real time. Operational Usage The TB2s have been proven highly effective in many sorts of ways, and the system lends itself for multiple uses. For instance, for intelligence gathering, the drones are equipped with high-resolution cameras and sensors, allowing them to gather intelligence in regions that human operators may find difficult or dangerous to venture into. This data may be used to keep an eye on criminal or terrorist activities, trace the transit of weapons or illicit goods, and detect possible risk. Also, it can be highly useful for planning the capture of high-value targets and understanding the coming and going on a day-to-day -day basis. The Bayraktar drones are not only used for bombing, of course. It could also serve good as a deterrent. 
When, for instance, drones are flying over a certain area and they are spotted, it will send a clear message to the ones on the ground. Search and rescue missions can also be aided by these machines. Drones outfitted with thermal imaging cameras and other sensors can be used to find missing people in distant or dangerous locations. This has the potential to save lives and shorten reaction times in emergency circumstances. Throughout the course of multiple years, the drones have been put into use in Libya, Syria, Africa, Azerbaijan, and most recently in Ukraine. During the invasion of Ukraine, TB2 drones were used by Ukraine's armed forces to target Russian positions and equipment stashes, which could be identified and subsequently destroyed right after. Ukraine is presumably now in the possession of close to 70 Bayraktar drones. Each drone is believed to be around $5 million. That's a hefty price tag. But as Lieutenant General Nikola Olescu calls it, the drones are life-giving. And that is probably the most literal sense in their case. It is reported that TB2 drones have successfully destroyed, on several occasions, Russian command posts, military vehicles like trucks, howitzer tanks, electronic warfare systems, helicopters, and self-propelled artillery systems. Although no details have been given so far, the TV-2s that are received by Ukraine seem to be specifically outfitted for their use cases and according to their wishes. A jamming antenna and glide bombs were added for their needs, reports show. Bayraktar is already working on the future as recently came to light. They are working on a more autonomous focused air combat vehicle, which is codenamed Kizilelma, and will be subsonic. It is part of a project which translates to combatant unmanned aircraft system and might be in line with the recent developments with the U.S. Air Force of AI-powered fighter jets. It will heavily rely on new radar technology, speed, maneuverability, and advanced weapon systems. It is also believed that Vicar is aiming for making this vehicle supersonic, which would be a 12-year long dream, according to the brothers. UAV-powered warfare is now becoming the de facto standard for making a difference on the battlefield. Having boots on the ground will be considered a highly vulnerable strategy in the near future, as autonomous vehicles and cyber warfare will continue to rise in popularity in wars. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section and consider subscribing if you like what we are doing here. Thank you for watching this video and see you all in the next.